Greetings, friends. Baruch Ata Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem, who creates the fruit of the vine. What is it about wine? Why does Purim overflow with wine? Why do we drink four cups on Pesach? Why do we inaugurate Shabbos with wine? Imagine you had a stressful week. You feel pressed down by life. Then Shabbos arrives. You lift the cup of wine. You look at the deep, rich color. If you are fortunate enough to be drinking Israeli wine, you're looking at the produce of the holy soil of Israel. And then you start the blessing. Baruch Atah, already you are in a different world. Kiddush, by definition, brings Kedusha into the world. As it says in the Psalms, King David wrote in Tehillim, wine gladdens man's heart. How does it work? There is a secret in the fruit of the vine which elevates the soul. It seems to remind the soul that it exists. This is what our entire life is about. We want to focus on the neshama, on the soul. But we have to find it first. When the wine enters us, <clears throat> the soul remembers its own existence. Think of the tsaras Am Yisrael has suffered, millennia of suffering at the hands of slaves, murderers, enemies. Yet for thousands of years, we have lifted our cup Friday night and suddenly the world is filled with light and hope. Peace be upon you, ministering angels, Sholem Aleichem. We drink the deep red wine and suddenly we are in a different world. As it says in Lachado D, shake off the dust, arise, don your splendid clothes, my people. Through the son of Yishai, from Beis Lechem, draw near to my soul, redeem it. On Pesach night at the Seder, it is a nearly universal custom to dip one's finger in the coast in the wine cup and remove a drop of wine for each one of the 10 plagues. Dam, Tzafardeya, Kinim, and so on. After you remove those drops, look in your coast in the wine cup. Did the level of the wine drop? Do you see any difference in how much wine is left in your cup from before you took out those drops? No, you cannot see any difference. Each drop represents a powerful plague which decimated the most powerful nation on earth. But the cup is still full of wine. My friends, I had the most amazing thought. I cannot remember if I read it somewhere or the thought came to me, but I have not been successful in finding the source. So maybe the thought came to me. What happened in Mitzrayim in ancient Egypt was perhaps the most important event in the history 
of the world, aside from creation itself, aside from Parsinai, the giving of the Torah. But it led directly to the revelation of the Torah. Here was the superpower of the ancient world, Mitzrayim, whose iron grip held the children of Israel prisoner in the cauldron of idolatry, impurity, and decadence. This was like the cold hand of a dead man clutching our ancestors. Hashem liberated our ancestors from death so that we could become the bride of the creator of the universe. What greater event was there than that? And this is what we celebrate every Pesach. Yet there's a greater event. And that is the Gaul of Shalema, the final redemption, which will occur at the end of history. <clears throat> I want to quote from the Gemara. Then Zoma asked the sages, will we mention the exodus from Egypt in the Messianic era? He then answered his own question. Has it not already been said, quote, behold, days are coming, the word of Hashem, when people will no longer swear as Hashem lives who brought the children up from the land of Egypt, but rather as Hashem lives who brought back the offspring of the house of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had dispersed them. The sages replied, this verse does not mean the mentioning of the exodus from Egypt will be discontinued completely, but rather that the mentioning of the redemption, the final redemption from the dominion of foreign kingdoms will be primary and the mentioning of the exodus from Egypt will be secondary. How much greater is the Gaul of Shalema, the final redemption, then you'd see it's Mitzrayim, the redemption from Egypt. Can we imagine it? Yes, we can. Just look at your wine glass at the Pesach Seder. Compare the 10 drops you have removed from the wine to the wine which remains in the cup. That comparison, the wine that remains in the cup to the 10 drops you took out is the degree of magnitude by which the final redemption will overshadow the exodus from Mitzrayim. The wine in your cup is like the ocean compared to a drop of water. My friends, the final redemption will represent such an overthrow of current world culture that that culture, the world of Asa, Edom, has been trying to push it off for thousands of years. In its deepest consciousness, it knows what's coming. The world of Asa, of Edom, cannot bear to contemplate the thought of its own downfall. That is why it is so desperately trying to enslave our people and push us down to this very day. When you hold a cup of wine in your hand this Pesach, think about the final redemption and the incomprehensible greatness of the Almighty, the invincible power which will topple every wall and bring down all the pompous emperors of the world. All will tremble before the king of kings and our great nation, his chosen, his firstborn, will Be'ezus Hashem, with God's help, merit to see this day if we hold on to his Torah with all our strength. May the temple be rebuilt, the city of Zion 
replenished. There we shall sing a new song and with joyous singing ascend. May the merciful, the sanctified be blessed and exalted over a cup, a full cup of wine worthy of Hashem's blessing. Good Shabbos.